Total Queries in Access can give you a beautiful overview of the information stored in your database, in your tables. I'm just showing two simple ones and show you how to make them. Say I want to find out for employees how much they sold and what their bonus is going to be. First I ask the user which year do you want, 95, 96 or nothing if I just click OK. It does it for all the years in my database and it gives me the employees, it gives me their sales and what their bonus is that they have received during all that time. A similar one is the next one that shows you in a cost tab how many sales we had per year in 94, 95, 96 for these product names. So what are we dealing with? This is the database structure. Database tools, relationships, we have at least four tables in there. One employee, marked by an employee ID, has many orders. That employee ID is the foreign key. Every order has an order ID, and every order ID has many order details. Products have also many order details, so the two together, order ID and product ID, is the primary key in this details table. And this primary key is in the products table, the primary key in the orders table, etc. It's important how you set up your tables in order to make good queries. Let's start with the first one. Um, let's say I only want the results for 95. So these were the bonuses for 1995 for these employees. I'm going to the design screen. You need in there at least these three tables. I don't need the products in this case because I'm not asking for that information. Um, you show the tables and put in the tables that you want. Okay. Then you are going to make it a total query by clicking on the totals tab. What that does is it adds a new row, the total row, and we will go into those details. You move in the employee ID, from, and it's automatically from the table order, so not this one, but that one. Group it by, so we will have it per employee. Group by. And then we create a new field that is a calculation. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it better. I call that field employee sales colon space and then I use the sum function based on the unit price and the quantity and we multiply that. Because the formula is complete I have to put in the total row expression. Don't forget that otherwise it, it will not do that correctly. Or if you did not put the formula sum in there, the function sum, then you could do the sum here. But when you save the query it will automatically transform that into what we have here. Then we are going to do a new field bonus which is a little more complicated. In this case we call it bonus colon space and then I use two if functions. A nested one inside an if function. IIF, that's the way that function is called in Access. If the employee sales is less than 50,000, then we put zero in there. Otherwise, another if function. If the employee sales is less than 10,000, then take the employee sales, which is the, the field that we created here before. So I use that new name, times 5%. Otherwise, give me 10% of the employee sales and OK it. Again, that's an expression, because everything is in that formula up there. And then finally, I added an order date field that uses a WHERE condition. That will say it does not show up. At the moment you click on WHERE, it clicks the SHOW button OFF, and it puts a parameter in there with a like statement. A like statement is always used if you use an, 
asterisk. And asterisk means take anything in that date to start with, hook onto it, space ampersand space, and then a parameter. Parameter is always surrounded by brackets, not parentheses, but brackets. Which year do you want? And in, inside parentheses I put 95 or 96 or nothing. And so if you leave that empty, it will take every date. If you type 95, it will take. It, it says I don't care how the date starts as long as it ends with 95. Okay, and that's what it does. So when we go to the other side of the screen, if I type 96 this time, it will do all of that correctly. Now the other one. We have orders, order details and products this time, not employees, because we don't care about the employees. So we have all the connections between those already. The f f you make it a total query, but I do a little more in this case, I make it a cross-tab query. Click on cross-tab. The cross-tab query automatically adds a total row, but it also adds a cross-tab row. We take the product name, group by, of course and we put that in the row heading. Then in the year column we use a function that is called date parts. I call it years, colon space and then the function date part. It needs to know what part of the date do you want. Why, 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 why inside double quotes is the year. If you want a quarter you just type one Q. If you want just a month you type one M. And then the second argument is what date do you want, the order date. The two other arguments are optional. Okay. We put that in the column heading. You can only put one field in a column heading. You can have more row headings, but not more column headings. And then finally we put a formula in there. In this case that might be a little more complicated than before. Why? First of all we need a sum function, then the quantity times the unit price. But now we have two unit prices. We have one here and we have one there. So we have to specify which one do we want. If you find that hard to type, then I would suggest that you go here to the build option instead of zoom. And the build option has the possibility that you use from your database, from the tables, the one you really want. You want the order details. And then all you have to do is you just double click on unit price and it will take it automatically from that table and put that in here. Again, because the formula is complete, make it an expression. And don't forget to make that the value field. Okay. So now we have a beautiful query that collects information for 94, 95, 96. And if you have more years, it will automatically add those columns in a cross-tab query. 